If you are an IT student, then you are probably aware that you have to do a PAT for the end of the year. And if you are in grade 12, this PAT is a very important part of your marks. So we are going to look at the 2024 PAT guidelines, the document that was just released recently. We're going to talk about what the topic is. And I'm going to give you some tips that can help you before you get started to make sure that you maximize all those marks. The document we have over here is the guidelines for 2024. And let's just go through this document quickly. So I'm jumping straight to the part where what is the pattern? It's our practical assessment task. It's basically a way to show off your skills. And what I want you to do to maximize your marks is to actually think of this not as something that you have to get done, but something that you want to do because you want to show off everything that you've learned in your IT career. You've learned so many wonderful skills and this is your way of showcasing them. And if you are proud of what you've learned and you really want to demonstrate this is what I was able to do and learn and accomplish, then that mindset will help you be more productive. It'll help you maximize the marks. And a nice byproduct will be that you will get good marks. If you're just doing this for the marks, then at some point you're going to get bored and you're going to get unmotivated. But if you're doing this from the perspective of I really want to show off everything I've learned to be proud of what I've done, then you've got a better chance of making sure that you get all the marks. So the, the pattern is divided up into two phases. There's a whole series of tasks, but task one to five relates to phase one. And that's going to be regarding a document that you have regarding your planning. And then you've got your phase two, which will be your physical Delphi application. But you'll also have maybe a document there, which we'll talk about. So they talk about the submission date. So let's look here. They say the phase one should be no later than one week before your mid-year exams in term two. And then your phase two should be the last week of term three or before you start your trial exams. Obviously, we don't have the dates for the trial exams yet, but those are the guidelines of when you should hand them in. I would not wait until this deadline over here to have your phase one completed. If I scroll down here, you'll notice that the phase one is 48 out of 150. That's less than a third of the marks majority of the marks are in the phase two. So if you are going up in, until your exams in June, that means you're spending the whole of the first term and a couple of weeks in the second term to get a third of the marks. And then you've got to spend almost a couple of weeks in the third term to do the phase two. That's going to put a lot of pressure on you to get that phase two done. So my suggestion is that you aim to have your phase one completed by the end of term one at the very latest, the first week of term two. Make sure that you've completed as much of it as possible so that you can start your phase two as soon as possible. One of the things you're going to need to do in your phase one is to design your screenshots. You can do that already and that's technically going to help you with your phase two. But what you can then do is for the rest of term two, while you are working on your phase two, if you pick up that there's anything that's changed or anything that you've picked up, like I can't do that, I want to change that or tweak that, that allows you some time to go back to your phase one before you hand in to go and tweak it and update it. So you can still make changes up until that date, but try get it as done as soon as possible. So let's go look at the topic. The topic for 2024 is the property market. So we're talking about properties, buying houses, anything to do with that. So you are given a whole bunch of scenarios and you need to create an application related to the property market and do research on the information system requirements. You're not limited to these ideas, but it needs to make sure that it's within the theme of the property market. So let's just look at what they give us. Property agencies is the first one that comes to mind with a buying and selling of properties. So I'm thinking if you are creating a program for a property agent, you might want to create a system where you keep track of potential buyers and sellers and being able to contact them. Or you might want a database where you keep track of the houses that you've got being sold and who's seen the different houses or who's making offers on the different houses, something along those lines. Anything to do with home improvement, like interior decorating or carpentry, something to do with them. There's a lot of options over there, but you want to make sure that you tie it into your property theme. Banking services, maybe people want to apply for loans and you want to say who's apply for loans, what are the details that they need to apply for loans. Maybe you know someone in your family that is recently doing that. So you can ask them questions about what information the banks are wanting and you can use that as part of the data that you would put in your database. And researching how loans are accepted and interest rates. Legal services, like getting the deeds for the office and the transfers. If you're a legal company, maybe you want to do a database for them, say which properties your clients are applying for, what's the status of the deeds. You could do something along those lines, especially maybe if you've got someone who's buying multiple properties. So that's, I can see nice tables there. Capital gains related types of properties. I'm not too sure about that one. Nothing that grabs me there. 
water and electricity bill services. Maybe you want to keep track of the water and electricity bills of properties in a complex or maybe in your city. Insurance companies, but you need to make sure that you focus that insurance on buildings and home content. Ooh, a nice one. Security companies, neighborhood watch, crimes watch. Maybe you want to do a roster where people can sign up and then you can go and allocate people to different time slots for the neighborhood watch when they do patrols, for example, or you can keep track of incidences that have happened in your area. This might be a really useful way to keep track of stats to see which areas are affected by crime in a particular month, for example. If you are auctioning property, you might want to do something along those lines. Courses involving the property market. So as long as you are studying something related to property, uh, making sure you keep track of magazines, media, or advertising properties. Maybe you are a, a newspaper and you're going to be advertising. So you've got a list of all your properties and you keep track of which issues have advertised different properties. Keep track of that. And then foreign property investors. So there are a couple that are very interesting things that you can do. I am particularly like the idea of the keeping track of who's buying and selling houses. Maybe even the banking services are determining if people can get their loans or not. The neighborhood watch one I thought was quite nice. And as well as advertising them. Those are the ones that stick out to me particularly. So pick something. You don't have to obviously pick one of those as long as it's related to the property market. And remember that we're making one program. So, yeah, so try, if possible, stick to one category. I'm coming down to the PAT requirements. It must have a database connection. If you don't have a database, then you've thrown away so many marks because there's very little that you can do if you don't have some sort of database. And a lot of the marks relate to database connectivity and database manipulation. So you must make sure that you've got a database set up in your phase one already. You're going to have to make use of a text file at some point. So thinking about how you can get data into a text file. Maybe there is a document that you want to print that you could make it into a text file format. That would be an idea. Or there's certain data that's not in the database that you want that is very simple that you, that you can extract from a text file. Other data structures there, they're referring to obviously arrays and objects. And it must be a multi-form graphical user interface. So they talk about the database. There must be at least two linked tables. You can have more tables, but two of them at least must be linked. They must have a relationship to it. In other words, the primary key of one is in the other table. So there's a, as a foreign key. So there's a link between them. So for example, you might have a table of clients and then you might have a table of properties. In the property table, there'll be a field for every record that links to the client table, maybe a client ID, and that tells tells us which client owns that particular property and that's the link between the two tables. So one person would obviously own one house so that's an easy table. If you've got a situation like a crime watch where you've got multiple people on multiple patrols, you could have a table with the different patrols, you could have a table with the different people that have signed up to do patrols and then there's a middle table which has the primary key of the patrol and the primary key of the person so that you can keep track of who's on the different patrols. So sometimes there'll be a third table but the table in the middle is what links the other two tables together. And there must be at least five fields and ten records in these tables and you're going to be using Delphi code and SQL to manipulate it. We spoke about a text file there must be objects and classes that's the new thing from grade 11 particularly so make sure that you've got an object maybe you're going to do some calculations and you're going to do it via an object maybe you want to extract data from the text file or even from the database and put it into an object so that it can easily do those calculations so things to think about as well as other advanced programming concepts here they're talking about arrays you must make sure that you have an array i would strongly suggest a parallel array because that's very complicated and make sure that you get a lot of those marks your graphical user interface, you need at least three screens. You could have, for example, panels that pop up, uh, but ideally you want to make sure that you're showing off that you go from one form to another. So there must be multiple screens and it must interact with the database and you must have good HCR principles. In other words, human computer interaction. Your buttons are all nicely laid out. They're all the same size. They're all in a nice order. They're all in sensible places. The, the color scheme is good. All of those type of things. I'm at the bottom of the phase one requirements. Yeah, you, is where you're going to get started with a document. You're going to create a document. And in that document, you'll have a description of your topic. That's going to be your task definition, your user requirements table, defining the roles, the activities, the limitations, a description of the different data structures, how you are going to use a database, a text file, a class, and an array with examples of them, the graphical user interface and your IPO tables, as well as the navigation. There's a reference to how the different screens go from one to the other or like a flow chart so you'll need that as well we have a whole video series on the pat with pat tips and i go step by step through the phase one telling you how to lay it out what you can put in so 
In a video coming soon, we will talk about the PAT guide as well as the progress tracker, as those are two other documents that are going to be really useful for you for your PAT. For your phase two, you're going to be handing in your completed project, obviously your declarations at the end. Those are the documents you say who helped you with your PAT, that you did the work on your own. So that's very good to fill in. But I just want to take note, you might have a document with your PAT for the phase two with regard to like the help function. So yeah, we talk about the document, the program. Now your notes for the user, you want to describe how to interact with the program. So this is like a user manual, very simple little document where you can keep track of how passwords work, how to log on, maybe some notes just to help the user to use your program you might want to make this in the form of a video so then you'll include a video with it you might want to have a document an actual physical word document or you might want to in your actual program have buttons that you click on and then the help will pop up in the actual program as long as you got some sort of way of helping the user so if you aren't doing it in the program then you have to include a document or a video or something that's going to show the user how to use the program the developer notes that's going to be your programming comments in the code to describe everything that you've done so that's what you're going to hand in. But take note that at the end, you're also going to have an interview with your teacher. Your teacher is going to schedule a, a date with you, understanding that your teacher has to get through all of the students. And so it's not going to be feasible for them to interview you on the very last day that, that it has to be marked. Because they have to do the interview and mark in that time. You need to be understanding of your teacher. Make sure that you are giving yourself enough time to complete the pat before that interview. Because it might be a little bit earlier than expected. Where you're going to show in all your documentation. You're going to demonstrate your pat to your teacher. And your teacher is going to ask you questions. So make sure that you know what your different sections of your code are doing. If you got help from somewhere else for a certain aspect, make sure that you comment in your code where you got that help from and what that code does. Those comments in your code are going to be what's very beneficial over here. So that if you get stuck, you can just read the comment and explain to the teacher, this is what this section of code is. And the other thing to take note with those comments, they are also going to be the parts of your program that are going to speak for you when you're not there with a moderator or with your teacher. So when your teacher's marking the rest of the pat by themselves, allocating marks. If your comments are very clear and say, this is where I've declared my object, they're going to clearly see that you've got an object and then they can go and give you those marks. They can clearly see this is where my parallel array is. It's a good way to also show the marker or moderator where the different parts of your pat are that you were required to do. So really use those comments to guide you with your interview as well as when you are not there to speak for yourself. Now the rubric is going to be very important. Make sure that you go through the rubric and make sure that you tick off all the blocks. I suggest that you mark your phase before you submit it to make sure that you've got everything. If you're unsure about how your teacher is going to interpret anything, have a discussion with them. Go, go ask them, what do I need in order to get the full four marks for this section? And they will explain to you and then you can go and do it. Just while we're here in the rubric, there are going to be things in the rubric that might not be mentioned in the actual document. So it's really important to not skip the rubric because there are going to be things here that you might miss. So for example, over here, I wonder if you notice that here they talk about the user requirements. They say there must be at least two different types of users. So this program that you're making is not just for one type of person. You've got two different types of users. So for example, you might have an employee and an employer using a single program. If you can't think of your second type of user, then a lot of people tend to think of a general user and a administrator. So the general user will be someone that can do certain things for their profile only, where an administrator can do things for everyone. They have more access. They can add certain things that the general user can't do. They can delete things that maybe the general user can't do. Because you don't want, for example, if you've got people logging on and they've got their profiles, you don't want anyone to be able to change other people's profiles. Your administrator maybe. And that's where you'll mention mention the roles and the activities and the limitations of the user because your general users can do this, this and this where your administrators will have zero limitations. They can change things. They can do this. So they'll be able to do a bit more than the general user. So don't forget about the two different types of users. And so you go through your rubric. There we go. Lots of things to go through. It's a long rubric. Make sure that you've done everything for each phase. Here is very important. Make sure that you get every single one of those for your database manipulation using SQL or your Delphi code. There's a lot of marks here and it's very easy to get those marks if you make sure that you get everything. And don't forget your comments, guys. People leave out comments and it's so easy to get those marks. And then the overall impression. And then there's the marks over there. 
Just a quick tip, I'm just coming back to this because when you start designing your screens, make sure that you follow these guidelines. Make sure that you are naming your variables correctly. For example, I number, S name, don't just call it X and Y. Give them good names and have little prefix in front to say what type of variable it is and your components name everything. We don't want to see label one. We don't want to see edit one and memo one. We want to see EDT name. We want to see RED display. We want to see the names of these components with the prefix in front. There's marks for that. Make sure that you are using them and make sure that you make use of both local and global variables. So when you are starting to design your forms, make sure that you are naming everything correctly from the beginning. You don't want to go back and do it and then you mess up your code. And then here's the declaration. These are the documents which you can download from our path card, which you can then add at the end of your document and fill in for yourself and then sign off. So these two documents are what I would include with your phase two at the end. So there we go. There's the PAT for 2024. I hope I've given you some ideas of what to look for and what you can do. Start thinking about programs that you would want to do for your PAT. Think about what aspect of the property market you want to focus on. Are we going to be looking at the sales agents? Are we looking at the neighborhood watch? Are we looking at the banks? Find your particular area that you want to focus on and maybe start asking people in those spheres to give you some advice. If you know someone who's a real estate agent, ask them for information about what they need when they are putting a house up for a listing, what information they need from their clients, and that can help you for information that you'll put into your database. Same with the banks. Ask a bank what, what are required for when you apply for a home loan. How do they accept home loans? All these things. So do a bit of research. The more information and the way you understand how that particular aspect of the property market works, the more you'll be able to design a database and design code and a program that will meet the needs of the people in those sectors. You've got your information, start thinking about it and then check out our next video which we publish about the documents for the PAT card and the progress tracker to help you with that. And together with that and together with our upcoming videos on our YouTube channel, we will help you get as many marks as possible for the PAT but you're going to be doing it because you want to show off your skills. Good luck, grade 12s. To make sure that you don't miss a video that we post about the PAT, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Mr. Long RT and Cat. Follow us on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. We give tips there as well. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.